Thank you. Our next item of business is consideration of business motion 21096 in the name of Graham Day on behalf of the Bureau setting out a revision, our revision to this week's business. Uh, can I call on Graham Day to move this motion? Move, President Officer. Thank you. No member has indicated they wish to speak on the motion. Therefore, the question is that motion 21096 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Thank you. The next item is topical questions. We have the one question today from Beatrice Wishart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government whether all aspects of the expansion of funded early learning and childcare will be available to all families in August 2020. Minister Marie Todd. Presiding Officer, we are confident that by continuing to work closely together with our partners in local government, we will deliver the expansion in early learning and childcare entitlement from this August. We have always recognised that delivering such an ambitious investment for our children will be challenging and not without risk. It is therefore encouraging to see Audit Scotland's follow-up report published today recognise that we are making steady progress towards deli delivery, that progress is broadly in line with plans and that there are effective national oversight arrangements in place. Beatrice Wishart. Audit Scotland has highlighted just how much there is to be done, including significant workforce challenges and big risks in infrastructure construction. What's at stake is the flexibility and choice that families need. Audit Scotland report today says that might not be available come August. It said it was likely that this wouldn't be fully implemented in time. So what will this mean for those parents looking to arrange their work around this important entitlement? And does the Minister agree with me that parents shouldn't be given a take-it-or-leave-it offer? Minister. So let me be clear that in August 2020, parents will experience a step change in the flexibility and choice over where they access their child's funded early learning and childcare entitlement as a result of us introducing Funding Follows the Child, which puts the power into the parents' hands to choose the type of childcare and early learning setting that suits their child and suits their family. So for the first time ever, they will be able to go to any provider so long as they meet the national standard and are willing to enter a contract with the local authority and have a place available, the parent will have the power in their hands to go there. And that means that private nurseries and local authority nurseries and childminders will be able to offer early learning and childcare. I am, expect the flexibility and choice to continue to expand as the programme is fully implemented. Um, and I expect that further change will happen in future as parents understand the opportunities that are available to them from August 2020. Beatrice Wishart. I thank the Minister for her reply. But parents deserve to know whether or not the expansion is on track where they live, because this will decide whether they can actually get the full benefit of this policy in six months' time. However, the government's refused to give us any local breakdowns. The National Day Nurseries Association said this information would, quote, help demonstrate what is and isn't working. This is a national priority, so will the Minister now accept that people deserve clarity about whether this will be delivered in full where they live, and can we see local progress reports? Minister. So let me be clear, we will deliver in August 2020. We are, have a very strong governance uh, structure in place, the Joint Delivery Board, which the Audit Scotland uh, report highlighted was a very effective governance programme. I would expect there to be national delivery of this programme. I would also expect there to be local delivery successfully of this programme. Um, we do publish regular reports as a result of our joint delivery board um, um, discussions and um, I would be more than happy to highlight those regular reports and updates to the Parliament again should it be that uh, the Lib Dem member is not aware of them. There are four other members who wish to ask questions. Jamie Green to be followed by Ian Gray. Uh, thank you. I listened uh, carefully to the Minister's response uh, and I accept that the funding may follow the child but surely that is predicated on there being adequate places in the nurseries themselves and enough teachers in those nurseries to deliver the equipment. The Audit Scotland report says, and I quote from it, presiding officer, there are significant risks that councils will not be able to expand funded DLC to 1140 hours by 2020, and it will be difficult to increase the infrastructure 
and workforce to the levels required in the limited time available. So in light of this, Minister, let me ask quite simply, uh, will you give an absolute guarantee that we will find ourselves fully staffed by August 2020 to deliver that commitment? Minister. So let me be clear, the Audit Scotland report confirms that we are broadly on track. We are where we expected to be at this point. Undoubtedly, we have a great deal of work to put into place between now and August 2020. And for that reason, we have put in place robust contingency plans for the infrastructure investment, for example. So the data was collected, the data was collected for the Audit Scotland report back in October. And by January, we find we are 3% ahead of target on the infrastructure completion rate. So I would say, yes, I am confident. Not only are we ahead of the plan, but we have robust local contingency plans in place in order to be sure that we can deliver in August 2020. On the workforce, we have increased the pipeline for a number of years at college places, university places, and in apprenticeship week uh, this week, I have to highlight the success of our apprenticeship recruitment. So we aim for a 10% year on year increase, and we actually achieved in the first year a 21% increase, in the second year a 24% increase. I am absolutely confident, given that half, more than half, of the staff are already in place. A couple of local authorities, a number of local authorities have already completed their recruitment drives. I am very confident that we will meet the target necessary. Ian Gray to be followed by Alistair Allen. <clears throat> Thank you. We're now in March. Uh, the policy is promised in August and the key finding of this report is that in that period we will be required to find half the workforce increase and deliver half of the new infrastructure uh, for the whole programme. Does the Minister not think that such a finding demands contingency action rather than assurances that everything is fine? Minister. So, Presiding Officer, let me reassure the member that there are robust contingency plans in place with a project of the scale and complexity, despite the fact that by every measure we are on track and on target to deliver, of course it would be foolish not to have developed robust local contingency plans. And we have done that. So that gives me a great deal of confidence that we will deliver in August 2020. Alistair Allen to be followed by Alison Harris. Uh, thanks, Presiding Officer. Um, recalling that under the Lib Dems, uh, funded childcare was less than one third of what it is now. Um, can the Minister say more about uh, how workforce planning in different parts of the country is progressing uh, to ensure that uh, the expansion of funded early learning and childcare uh, is in place uh, from August 2020? Minister. So, yes, on, on the question of funding, the Scottish Budget will deliver a year-on-year -year increase of £201 million in the revenue funding that local authorities receive for the delivery of early learning and childcare. And by the end of the Parliament, the local authority annual revenue funding for early learning and childcare will have increased by £567 million on 2016-17 levels. With regard to the local workforce issues, as, um, as Alistair Allen is um, an MSP for a rural area, he will recall that one of the early concerns that we m was that we might not have sufficient people in the rural areas to deliver the extra workforce required and particularly the impact of Brexit and the impact of reducing our population of EU nationals might have on that. So that's clearly a concern to us. However, what we're finding is that a number of um, people employed in early and learning and childcare in the rural areas were working part-time and are keen to go up to full-time. So I can assure him that we are on track um, to deliver in the rural areas as well as the more urban ones. And Alison Harris. Thank you. The Audit Scotland report says flexibility and choice will not be in place by August. Paid childcare for children under three is now at risk due to the expansion. There is no robust way of monitoring the staff drain from the PVI sector to councils. There was rushed planning and delayed guidance from the outset. How does the Minister respond to these very serious concerns? Minister. So let me pick up on the point of delays in finalising key guidance, and that will give you a response to many of the issues that you raise in that question. We confirmed that the ELC expansion would be provider neutral 
and driven by parental choice and delivered across the public, private, third and childminding sectors way back in March 2017, which is a full three years before implementation. Now, we took a joint decision with our local government and sector partners to consult on the national standard to ensure that everyone who had an interest had time to fully consider those issues and to contribute their views. And that means that we are working very closely with partner providers, with local authorities, with everybody who is involved in Team ELC. The commitment is huge right across Scotland and that undoubtedly gives me the confidence that we will deliver. Thank you very much. And that concludes topical questions.